Today we're going to have a look at the uh, Yaesu ATAS 25. It's a portable antenna and uh, I've uh, been using it over the last few days uh, when I went uh, uh, on a long weekend down into Suffolk. It's quite an interesting antenna actually and I found something really interesting, a particular application of this antenna which uh, I tried and gave me a few surprises. So let me take you through the antenna how it all goes together and how I found it during my recent operation out portable. The aerial that I'm going to discuss and demonstrate today is the Yaesu ATAS 25. It's a manually tuned antenna that covers 40 metres through to 70 centimetres and it's variable frequency you can adjust the antenna to basically whatever you like in that part of the spectrum or at least to uh, 50 megahertz um, and then on 2 meters and 70 cms it's slightly different and I'll show you that um, later in the video but it's a handy antenna to go out portable with you can stick it on the ground and or on the balcony or on the patio and uh, provided you've got some sort of ground system, some radio system, then it seems to work quite well and I'll, I'll cover that in more detail. Let me first of all describe well, how it works. Or what, it's, it's called a screwdriver antenna. What is a screwdriver antenna? Well, basically, it's an antenna that as you rotate, uh, the tapping on the coil either increases or decreases and on most of them you can give it a tug um, if you want a fast tune and basically as you as you pull the antenna up so you'll increase the inductance and as you push the antenna down so you'll reduce the inductance at least on this particular model. I should perhaps also mention this antenna will actually handle 100 watts so if you've got a 100 watt base station transceiver you're going to take away with you wherever then it'll quite happily handle that power. And that's quite an advantage if you're working with a smaller antenna. Um, it makes up for what uh, you perhaps lose a little bit on the efficiency antenna. What's the efficiency loss? Or what's the performance compared with a full-size quarter wave, shall we say? Well, I reckon you lose around about 4 dB. Um, probably, uh, probably approaching 1S point, but, you know, if you've got a 100 watt transceiver and you've lost 1S point, so what? <laughs> The antenna comes in four sections. You've got the bottom unit here, which is the variable coil that's inside that case in there. Then you've got the whip, which is three sections, and these screw together. Then you've got the two meter and 70 cms radials, the instruction, and a small capacity hat that's used to fine tune on VHF. The antenna base has got a thread, which is standard thread that a tripod, camera tripod will take. And the intention is to mount this antenna onto a camera tripod. Camera tripods come in all shapes and sizes. This is a very simple tripod without any uh, vertical extension at all. And uh, the base of the antenna will screw onto that tripod there. The base of the antenna is quite heavy actually. And uh, at one end you've got the SO239 to connect to the antenna. You can have the 2 meter and 70 cms radials uh, that plug in there and at the other end we've got the connection for the whip and the whip um, is in three sections it uh, screws in there and to adjust the antenna um, there's two ways you can do it you can just grab it like that and this actually is in, um, increasing the inductance so we're increasing the inductance there and if we go like that we reduce the inductance. Now the nice thing about this is that you can um, change frequency or change inductance quite quickly by going like that but also if you rotate it it goes in a very smooth progression so you could actually adjust the resonance in I don't know, 25 kilohertz um, uh, steps quite easily. They're not actually steps because it's continuous, but basically you can do some fine tuning by adjusting that. The whip is non-adjustable. Um, that basically 
um, is fixed. So instead of telescoping a whip, you adjust this. And I think in some respects that's better because the trouble with telescoping a whip is that over time you can get a bit of moisture in there and that sort of thing. Whereas if the whip is fixed and you adjust it here, it's much more accurate, smoother, and frankly easier to do. If you look at the space between that and that, that basically is some something you could measure. So what you can do, if you want to actually um, get yourself in a ballpark situation, um, obviously you've got to pre-measure it, but once you've actually resonated the antenna, say you've resonated the antenna on, I don't know, 20 metres, and you found it's that's the position of resonance, you can actually measure that with a tape measure, or put a little bit of uh, I don't know, length, length of wood, cut a little length of wood um, that's, that fits in there. And you know that, that you can quickly get to 20 metres by doing something like that. And likewise on 40 metres, which it will be fully extended there, almost fully extended. You can have some sort of reference there to get yourself in the ballpark area of 40 meters and then do the fine tuning by either rotating it there or dragging it down um, either way um, it's easy but the fine tuning needs to be done using that there so how does it work on VHF well if I telescope this in this actually is a quarter wave on two meters with the antenna coil completely collapsed like that um, the coil is out of circuit, it's bypassed, and this is a quarter wave on two meters. And of course, if you plug the radial in there, you get a basically a two meter vertical. How did it work on 77s? Well, uh, a two meter quarter wave is three quarter waves on 77s. So this is actually three quarter waves on 77s, which again is a lowish impedance at the base. And you plug in the 77s radial, and you've got resonance on the 77s band. So that's basically how it works. And in fact, in that position, with two radials plugged in, you don't need to change anything at all. You've got resonance on both two meters and 70 sems. So it's a quite a universal uh, system. You've got a protective uh, cap on the far end of the uh, whip so that you don't uh, do any damage. And this is the base of the whip that uh, goes into the top of the antenna there. I took the opportunity of testing the antenna during a recent uh, weekend break. To test the antenna I've come down to my uh, holiday home in Suffolk and we've been blessed with some pretty uh, pretty nice weather. Uh, I've come down in our in our camper van and it's uh, well, it's altogether very nice considering it's the middle of September. We're located just uh, on the edge of a holiday park here, and on the other side of the hedge, we've got a little track. Occasionally, a farm farm track that goes by, but otherwise, it's very very quiet, and it's a good uh, place to test antennas. I have got a power cable nearby, but strangely enough, it's totally quiet. So whether it's in use or not, I don't know, but. Uh, it doesn't kick up any noise, at least uh, on the HF band, so we're blessed with that. Anyway, anyway let me show you the uh, antenna setup I've got here. As the antenna was designed to go onto a tripod, I used my camera tripod. This one is particularly sturdy, and I used elevated radials because elevated radials tend to work better than radials on the ground, and you don't need so many of them. And I may actually publish another video on that uh, sometime in the future. But here you can see that uh, uh, I've used a couple of uh, chairs to anchor the far ends of the radials. And that's the setup that I used. I chose to operate just on 20 metres for the tests because the 20 metre band was open. Uh, the other bands, the higher bands, weren't really open at all. So there was not much point in... Uh, in uh, doing any, any uh, operation there. So this is the basic test that I used while I was on holiday for a couple of days. And of course it's very easy to adjust the antenna simply by rotating the coil when you're fairly close to resonance. You just rotate the coil to uh, get to uh, the point in the band where you want lowest VSWR. 
You'll see here that I used a line isolator at the feed point. That's kind of important because it preserves the radiation pattern of the antenna. One of the things I decided to do was to move this antenna up onto the deck here, and that would um, make the vertical higher, which is not in itself super critical, but it would get the radials higher off the ground. So if I just turn the uh, camera around now, uh, you'll see that I've got the the um, antenna mounted on a tripod. Fortunately, it's quite a high tripod. It's uh, it's uh, well, it's good enough for two meters high when it's fully extended, and uh, I've got uh, uh, two radios on it. One going down that angle there, and the other one going down at that angle there, which hopefully you can see. I'll actually I'll turn the camera around on the other side of the. Uh, Antenna, you can see. Hope that, hope that gives you a better idea. We've got some uh, nice uh, afternoon sunshine here. What's the time now? About ten past five in the evening, middle of September. So that's not too bad. And very fortunate in this position because we get the sun right until uh, it actually goes down on the horizon. Well, that's worked pretty well actually. Whether it's any better, well, um, I got some good contacts this afternoon on SSB. Uh, heard uh, a VK coming through, but uh, too weak to work, but heard a VK coming through, so it's uh, pretty promising. The um, You'll see the coax cable coming down there at an angle, uh, sorry, no, at the top there, going up at an angle across there, but I have got a line isolator right at the feed point, so there's no um, common mode currents flowing from the antenna down that uh, coax cable because that can sometimes upset the antenna so basically the antenna is isolated from the coax cable and just got two radials one either, either side. I was using the Zigu X6100 and here's the VSWR on 20 meters which uh, is very impressive I think. And here's the setup I was using quite basic really the Zigu X6100 and an external battery which gave me 10 watts. A lot of my contacts were on CW, but uh, here's a few of the uh, contacts on uh, SSB. Yeah, very good afternoon to you. Name is Peter, Papa Echo, Tango, Echo, Romeo. Name's Peter, uh, you are 5-9er, 5-9er, from Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor. Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, QRP. Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, hello, you're 5-3, QRP. Yeah, QSL, you're 5-6, five, six. you're 5-6 five, six from Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor. Thank you, 5-3, good luck, QRP. Yeah, Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, the call is Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, uh, QRP. Running 10 watts, 1 0, 10 watts um, to a short vertical, 10 watts to a short vertical. From Golf 3, Oscar, Juliet, Victor. Conditions weren't wonderful on the band, so I was quite pleased with those results. I tried to do a test on two metres, um, but it wasn't very successful because <laughs> there's nothing on the band at the moment. I could just show you the uh, arrangement here. Um, we've got uh, the base of the... Uh, well, this is the antenna, basically, without a whip in the top. There's nothing in the top at all. Um, we've just got the antenna going into the base, and then we've got this uh, quarter-wave radial coming out uh, from uh, the side of the uh, uh, antenna. So basically you've got a, 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 a quarter wave um, antenna and uh, it, 
It, I mean, it works, um, but uh, <laughs> I can't hear anything on the two meter band at the moment. So all I've done is um, just uh, switch to the air band and listen to some air traffic coming in. So the antenna is working OK, and I'm sure it would do if I was near a repeater. I'm not near a repeater. There's nothing on the air, so can't actually demonstrate it. Um, but the VSWR looks good on two meters. And as I say, on the air band, there's some traffic, as you can hear now. I promise you something interesting with this antenna, because what I was wanting to find out was if there's a way of putting this antenna onto a vehicle roof, bearing in mind that you can't really use it on a magnetic base. Now, I'm not thinking of actual mobile use. I'm thinking of uh, static use. Well, I have found a way, I think, of getting some very good results from this antenna, mounting it on the roof of a vehicle. But I'll come back to that in possibly the next video because I need to do a bit more work. But it's certainly very encouraging. So apologies, but I will have to come back to that in a future video as I say, possibly the next video. Well, the ATAS uh, 25 has proved a very interesting antenna. It's uh, uh, an antenna that is great for portable operation. Uh, it's great for quick uh, setups where you want to operate for half an hour or so. The limitation I first observed or first noticed was the fact that it's got to be mounted on a camera tripod. But then, of course, you can pick up quite cheap camera tripods. But then, when I realised that if you just get one of these, I don't know what you call them, really, these tripod bases that sits flat on a table, it opens up another interesting avenue of operation whereby you can just lay the radials out. Now, I have tried laying, laying the radials out on the lawn and it works OK. Um, but I do favour, I must admit, in terms of performance, uh, using resonant radials. I tend to choose the band I want to operate on anyway. Anyway, the ATS-25, we stock the ATS-25 Yesu antenna and um, we shall be happy to supply it on a 24-hour delivery. And uh, so if you feel inclined to give it a try and have some fun, then do so. It's, uh, it's an interesting antenna. Thanks for your support on this channel once again, much appreciated. Thanks for your comments, thanks for your support at the shop and on the website, etc, etc. And uh, we've been going, we're, we're now in our 52nd year, would you believe? Gracious me. Was it 52 years ago when I thought of the idea of selling ham radio gear? Gracious me. Times have changed. Hmm. Anyway, enough of that. Take care, enjoy your ham radio. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.